This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. In the sponsorship scandal, the Liberals may have broken every rule in the book, but it seems that Conservatives have borrowed a whole new book, a book of dirty tricks from their American cousins, and in doing so, in doing so, they have once again lowered the bar of ethical standards and, I argue, undermined the integrity of our electoral institutions in a way that is unprecedented in Canadian politics. In many ways, we were caught flat-footed and unawares by these dirty tricks. Voter suppression techniques are commonplace in the United States, with high-priced consulting firms specializing in sabotaging elections. But I don't think anybody really expected a Canadian political party to stoop so low and we didn't take necessary steps to protect ourselves from it. This could mean the end of the age of innocence in Canadian electoral campaigns. Elections Canada stated that these phony phone calls deliberately disrupted the voting process. Now, how is this different from a bunch of goons with clubs blocking the door to a voter station, as we've seen in third world countries or the deep south in the United States? Because the net effect is the same. You are sabotaging the ability of people to exercise their democratic right to cast their ballot in a federal election. In my view, there can be no, no more serious crime, nor a more heinous affront to democracy. Too many brave Canadians died fighting for the right to have fair and clean and free elections in this country to let this go unchallenged at the highest possible order. My father didn't go to war to fight for democracy only to have some sleazy punk in an American-style black ops department run roughshod over it and undermine its integrity. Now the boys in the black ops department will call it voter suppression techniques to try and give it some semblance of legitimacy, but in my view there is nothing legitimate about cheating and there never will be. We want the conservatives to fix health care, not elections. We want the Conservatives to fix pensions, not elections. And we want the Conservatives to fix our crumbling infrastructure, not fix elections. When you consider the millions of dollars of overspending, do the in and out electoral fraud, and now the hundreds of thousands of phony phone calls by the rack nine rascals, it makes you wonder about the legitimacy of the Conservatives' 39% majority mandate. Did they really win that last federal election? Or did they achieve their razor-thin majority by cheating? The public needs to know because there is a serious matter of public interest that far exceeds the success or failure of any one political party. Cheating in an election fuels the cynicism of an already jaded electorate, and if the public loses even more confidence in their electoral system, they will be even less likely to come out and vote and the integrity of our system is irreparably harmed. And in my view, nothing could be more serious. There were those who tried to say that Watergate was just a couple of Snoopy plumbers, but those journalists who pressed on found it was much more than that. I predict the RAC9 will become the Conservative Party's Group Action. And I predict that we will find that the sheer magnitude and audacity of the RAC9 rascals will be enough to make Richard Nixon blush. And I predict it will hang around the neck of the Prime Minister like an albatross. And I wonder if Justice Gomery is still available because I think we need his services once again if we are going to arrest this serious bastardization of our electoral system. So who are the masterminds of the Rack 9 rascals' robocalls of deceit into NDP-held swing ridings? Surely these young punks didn't unilaterally construct this massive conspiracy to defraud the electoral system and initiate hundreds of thousands of phone calls into NDP swing ridings. So you start by asking the logical questions on motive and opportunity. Who would stand to gain from misleading NDP and liberal voters in swing ridings? What is the full nature and extent of the relationship between the conservative central campaign and the RAC9 Inc of Matt Meyer? How much did they pay him and, what is, and why is some of the information on invoices to the Conservative Central Campaign blacked out? Who drafted the customized script to lie to NDP and Liberal voters about the whereabouts of their voting stations? We now know that many Conservative campaigns paid Rack 9s robocalling, including the riding, riding associations of three cabinet ministers and the Prime Minister. And they contributed money to the central campaign for the express purpose of purchasing robocall services from Rack 9. 
Who organized it? The architects of the conservative election campaign have all been appointed to the Senate. They're easy to find, but they're tough to nail down due to the privilege of members of parliament. Is this why they got appointed to the Senate? I mean, like Berlusconi hiding behind his parliamentary inviolability? We want the tough on crime party to get tough on the criminals in their own organization who would flagrantly defy the Elections Act and undermine that most fundamental freedom that citizens in a, in a democracy enjoy, the right to cast their ballot in a free and fair election campaign.